Yes, O oh Lord, may you be lifted high this morning. In this service, O oh Lord, may you be lifted high in our families. May you be lifted high in this country, Uganda. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us to come together in your presence, O oh God, to seek your face. We've come just the way we are, with all our weaknesses, with all our challenges before you. And Lord, we choose to lay them before you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for seeing us through the first months, oh God. And we thank you for this new month, a new, a new day, oh God. We commit this month into your hands. We ask for your blessing upon all of us this month, oh Lord. We pray for divine protection upon all your children, King of glory. And we pray for breakthroughs, oh God, in our lives. We thank you so much, oh God, for making us in your own image and calling us your children and making us your friends, oh God. So Lord, as we come this morning, we come just the way we are. And we come to you because you are a friend. You know us, oh God. You care for us, oh Lord. You've been there for us, O oh Lord. We know you'll continue to be for us, O oh God, in this month of October. So we choose to surrender this month into your hands, and we choose to surrender everything to you. May you be glorified. May you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. You are all most welcome for this 11 o'clock service, and it's a whole communion service. So we'll continue with the order of service. The Lord be with you. And also, you may be seated as we continue. This is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We shall join in that prayer and pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by your spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Truth. Amen. The summary of the law. Hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord God with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The collect of the day will all join and pray together. And today is the 16th Sunday after Trinity. So may we pray together. Oh Lord, oh Lord we beseech you. Let your continued pity cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your suffer, preserve it forever by your help and goodness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we all arise. And those outside, you may all come in. Today is a very special day, the first Sunday in the month of October. Let's appreciate God. Let's clap our hands and give a mighty hand clap to the Lord. And today we are blessed to have the pioneers leading us. So let's join them as we continue to seek the face of the Lord. In this month of October, let's be expectant. May God richly bless you as we continue. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, when you come to church at 11 o'clock, God is fresh. He's fresh because at 7 he's a bit sleepy, but at 11 he's awake. Amen. God is good. And all the time, it's an honor and a privilege to minister before the Lord this morning. And every breath that we have, let us praise and worship the Lord because he has sustained us. The year is already rolling out. It's already October. Oh my goodness. But his grace and his love and his strength and his power has been very sufficient. And today, God, we are here to celebrate your faithfulness, to 
celebrate your love, to celebrate your goodness, to celebrate you with everything that is in us. Hallelujah. Amen.
to be praised. How excellent is your name, O Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised. How excellent is your name. The Lord is worthy to be praised. How excellent is your name, O Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised. How excellent is your name.
Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. Our reading today is going to be taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 39, and we shall read from verse 6. Genesis, chapter 39, starting from verse 6. Genesis chapter 39 verse 6 says So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge and because of him he had no concern about anything but the food he ate Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance and after a time in his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said Lie with me but he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is, no, he is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her to lie beside her or to be with her. Receive the word of God. We all stand up for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading this morning is from St. Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it to eat with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have, re they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what you, your right hand is doing, so, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like hypocrites, for they love to pray out for they love to to pray standing in the synagogues and on the streets street corners to be seen by others truly i tell you they have received their reward in full brothers and sisters this is the gospel of christ may i now invite our dear chaplain to come and give us notices you may be seated Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Our God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Amen. You can also prove that to your neighbor. With a smile on your face. Show them that God is good. I would like to welcome you uh, to St. Francis Chapel, Macquarie University for this 11 o'clock service, and uh, as our tradition holds, if there's anyone who is here for the very first time, we'd like to make you feel very welcome. Please raise your hand if you're there. Oh, quite uh, a number, quite a number. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise. Would you like to stand, please? Because we haven't seen you. Please do stand quickly. And let me request, there was somebody here, where is the hand? Uh, or was it a little child? 
Okay, all right, all right. So there's only one? Keep standing, sir. Keep standing. Any other? All right, let's make him feel very welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I would also like to appreciate the ministry of the pioneers among us. Let's appreciate them. And uh, the clergy present. I am sorry I missed the first two services. Anyway, you were not here. So you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't even know that. But I was uh, at Makere College School for the dedication uh, service of this and Thanksgiving service of senior four candidates. Uh, they begin the exams in two weeks' time. Perhaps some of you have uh, children who are, will soon be doing the exams. And they send their love and greetings to you. College school is a constituent uh, center of worship of, of St. Francis Chapel. It is that season of exams where we shall be doing a lot of dedication uh, services. In fact, next Sunday, I will also be at King's College, uh, Budo, uh, for the Senior Six uh, dedication service. They, they, they booked me about uh, a year ago, and so <laughs> I have to honor. There were, there were changes in the calendar, but about a year ago, there was a head, a head boy, head student, uh, Matthew is the son of uh, the Rubales. He's the one who said, you have to be the one to do that. About a year ago. So just in case you, you don't see me on Sunday. In a special way, I would like to uh, welcome and introduce the Vice-Chancellor of Makere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, who is here with us together with his dear wife, Mrs. Susan Nawangwe. This is your church, but we also don't take your coming to church for granted. Uh, because your coming inspires many people uh, to come, especially the academic staff. I have seen uh, Professor uh, Bashasha, Bernard Bashasha, and your dear wife. Very easy to recognize. Uh, please do stand. Please do stand. And your family. Very easy to recognize. Right. I see many other professors, uh, the Makaras and others. So, in a way, you inspire many. And uh, I have introduced you intentionally that you would also come and introduce somebody who is too big for me to introduce. Uh, our preacher today is someone like John the Baptist said. You know what the Baptist, John the Baptist said about Jesus? All right, so may I invite uh, somebody who is able to introduce him uh, to do that, Professor Barnabas. Thank you very much, Reverend Onesimus. Praise God, Church. Uh, this morning I have learned two new things. Esther was uh, leading the praise and said, at 11 a.m., God is uh, fully awake. <laughs> but since I was a small child, I know that God never goes to slumber. <laughs> That's something I have learned. The other thing I have learned is... Uh, Reverend Onesima saying, this is your church, but we don't take your coming for granted. I thought you would say, I would be surprised if you don't come. <laughs> and thank you for the introduction of my wife, who is a, a prayer warrior. <clears throat> and I hope now you understand that... Uh, while bullets are flying around my head all the time. I am strong because there are people praying and God is protecting me. I have the pleasure and the honor to introduce my boss this morning. 
My boss is a very prominent citizen of this country. He has held very many positions in the government. But I think the most important of those is that he's the Chancellor of Makere University. <laughs> of course, I have known Professor Suruma even before he became Chancellor of Makere University. But I have been privileged to be under his guardianship for now close to six years, I think for six years already. And he has guided us very well as a university. <laughs> of course, the most recent thing that we should all know is that he's the author of the parish development model. <laughs> that makes us very proud as Makere University that this model that everybody thinks should be the one that will finally transform our society is authored by our own chancellor. And we would like to thank him very much. And he is going to, to be guiding us to make sure that the parish development model doesn't go the wrong way. So we'll be holding the parish development labs to ensure that we bring it back in line so that it can indeed transform our society. So it is my honor and pleasure to welcome you, Professor Suruma, to your university. I know we are with you this week, as you are all away on the 6th. October is the climax of our 100 years. And obviously, our chancellor will be there to welcome the visitor. And do you know who our visitor is? Sure. Nobody knows our visitor. <laughs> you know our visitor? Yes, I Tell do. Tell them. Uh, His Excellency President Yoweri Kaguta Tibuhaburwa Museveni. So we'll be glad to welcome him and also he'll be unveiling our 100 years monument. There's something that is coming up near social science, which people are wondering, what is this? But there's going to be a major monument to celebrate 100 years of Makere University. And I think you'll all enjoy it. I would like to make an update on the beginning of the semester. I think I made a statement last Sunday which confused a few people. Uh, there is a small change in the beginning of the semester. The continuing students were expected to report yesterday, but that was changed to 8th. So the continuing students will report on 8th, which is next Saturday, and the freshers will report two weeks after that. I thought I should make that correction. Thank you very much for this opportunity once again. I'm happy to be here at my own church. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, this is indeed your church. I keep reminding people that this is a university chapel. Now, I'll just top up the introduction by uh, saying that the, professor, the, the chancellor will speak to us on a topic which is the fear of God versus the fear of man. The fear of God versus the fear of man. And in order to redeem time, I will, I'm told this is an announcement or two. We shall uh, share those later, but let's get into the word first. And before he comes, shall we now invite the drama team with a skit to prepare the way for him. God bless you. For sure, today, I am not happy with both of you. Eh? How can you be the most serious people? You know how I like it? You're taking five minutes. What is your problem? But, madam, we did our best. We were two. 
How else do you want to... So what? Are you trying to say that I'm incompetent? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, madam. No, no, seriously. You know, I, we always go for four hours. You people are lasting five minutes. Are you serious with the kind of work you're doing? See, madam, my, my problem was one. My, you know, my wife has just given birth. And I was on that pressure. You know, I couldn't concentrate. Honest. I don't like stupid excuses. If you two are not serious, I will fire you and hire people that can service me properly uh, and no. do the best that they can do. Madam, don't go that far. Don't go. We are going to. In fact, ju just today I didn't take enough breakfast. That's why I was yes, performing. Yes. I was performing poorly. Yes, but I you have been fun. doing it very well. Yes. No, no. Today I is mean, something else. Today is a totally different story. Uh, a friend has even come. So, sorry, sorry, I'm late for the meeting. I'm very sorry. Ah. Hey, I'm very sorry for this. Fanny. Yes. yes. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am fine, madam. I am very fine. You look good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Madam, you're too good. You're too good. You're too good. So, madam, uh, do you gym? That is very yes, I do. I, I do gym. Oh. Every, every day, every, after every two days. Mm. Keep yeah. doing it. Eh? <laughs> you really look good. Anyway, it's fine. Eh? Thank you. Um, please come to my office. Eh? Okay. Just after here to pick your appointment later. Don't be late. All right, all right. You too. Brief him. No, no, eh? Tell him, eh? you know how I like it. Hard, long, please. Uh, don't delay. Eh? He's our best candidate. Don't worry, madam. Yes. He's our best. I'm waiting for you. I come now. Please come now. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you first. Let's just talk to him. Sm yeah, small. Yes. Emma, let me first go. I come. Had you first wait? First wait, Fanny. Fanny. Do you know how many people in this office want to be touched by madam? <laughs> she was all touching, touching me. But now like you, this, like this, like this. you see, I, and you when, were there. He, he, you are loud. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you for, for this job. Oh, oh, good day, moving too. You have joined <laughs> the big boys. This is now the league. I am telling you. Hey. This is the league. This is the league. And actually, for that matter, there are part. For you, we are going to, to, to give you uh, on the schedule Tuesday, uh -huh. Tuesday afternoon yes. uh -huh. and Thursday afternoon. So, so yeah. Those are the days I'm supposed to meet up for the meeting. Uh, you and just that. know the meeting the exactly that. Oh, ne and today is your first day, and so you better do well. And, and actually, do you know what? On top of that, you see our cars we drive. Yes. Just know, even you are soon going to drive your, your own car today. <laughs> yes, because the deal that we are signing for... Uh -huh. Just the only thing that is needed you service when you usually are concentrate. Service. Service. Do it. Yeah. Yes. Ah, concentrate. Yes. Service. Is it at church or at a petrol station? Ah, you're a married man. You know these things. You have to service. Ah, ah. Hey. First, make it clear. Mm. You mean akabos? Exactly. The, the, when a man and a so woman. So you even know why you yes. are you mean you people you sleep with, with a boss? Why are you shocked? You have sex with her. Why are you shocked? Jesus Christ. Emma, I am a born again Christian. First I way, don't first understand this thing. First way, first way. Ah, no, 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 listen, no, no. Listen, no, no. Listen. What, what are you saying? We are all Christians. Thank you very much. Praise we the pay, Lord. Pay. The Lord is good. Listen, the Lord we all is... pay tithes. Thank you. We all do offertory. Amen. And mm. we, are, we are good Christians. You see? Ah. So, in this economy, mm -hmm. when we have sacrificed and given you a deal a to get out of that poverty, you are doing what? To, to show you that it is a Christian engagement, the Lord works for those people who work for themselves. He pushes them. Let me tell you, we have prayed for this, and you, you'll be thinking our blessings are coming. How? Eh? Emma. Don't say no. Don't, don't say no. Don't say no. Don't say no. Fenny, Fenny, if you say no, 
me I'm telling you I am telling you I am go mm -hmm. yeah, going to be with you, you me I'm going to be with you your <laughs> now, now that we have opened up for you me I'm telling you if you if you dare not do this gig are you hearing you are gone you need I've this heard. we can't tell you our, our deals and you start saying me I cannot do it uh, you think you, we don't you know your home Fanny, Fanny, you better say yes just do it very fast we are Christians these things, you will go and repent. That we are supposed to give that, that big deal. No. Do you know how many people want to want, want the boss? And you're here? But you change your mind, you will see. It's just there. I, you, you say no. I, 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 you say? <laughs> you see, church, it's a serious deal. But there are so many Josephs here, including me today. How many have fallen? I go? I go? Even you next time say no. Let us pray. Lord our God, thank Thank you for everyone who has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a great privilege for me to be here this morning with you and to see you. Let me especially recognize uh, the Vice Chancellor. Thank you for welcoming me to the church. I'm happy to see your dear wife with you. It's always a pleasure to see you. And uh, all the academic staff and students, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to be here when I'm not awarding degrees. Uh, talking about Christ. I'm very grateful to Reverend Onesimus for the invitation to be here. And to my friends, the pioneers, for the way they always uh, support us. Please, I let you welcome us. Sing in Christ alone as professor. Oh, 
Thank you very much. No one can pluck the earth of his hand. No scheme of man. The topic given to me says in the secret place the fear of God versus fear of man. At first I thought I was reading a foreign language. It sounded so complicated. But with time I tried to pray over it and, and study and I hope that my interpretation will be of help uh, to you, to all of us. What is the secret place? When I looked up the Bible, I found Psalm 91, verse 1, which reads, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when I saw that, I suspected, I think correctly, that this is where the topic came from. Psalm 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's the King James Version. And I commented and said that there is safety of abiding in the presence of God. Safety. Safety of abiding in the presence of God. The Amplified Bible same 91.1 one says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure. So the commentary is the security of the one who trusts in the Lord. Security of the one who trusts in the Lord. The Message Bible said, you who sit down in high God's presence, Spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. In the high God's presence. I think the emphasis here is on presence. Being in the presence of God. And finally, the NIV version says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. To dwell in the shelter of the Most High. So this seems to be the interpretation of the secret place uh, in the psalm. But also in Matthew 6, which was read, it says that see that your charitable acts are done in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. But when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door, and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So the secrecy 
in respect to people, yes, you can close your door and they will not see you, but your God will see you. So we can have secrets from men and women, but we cannot have secrets from God. Indeed, we can take it that wherever we are and however we are, God is seeing us and knows what is going on in our lives. As I think it's the end of March 28, the last words of Jesus says, Behold, I'm with you always. Now, that's the first part of the topic that I was given, in the secret place. But the second part is the fear of God versus fear of man. I presume that uh, one of the reasons we, want, we keep things in secret is because we fear them to be revealed. So we fear men, we fear them knowing what we are doing. The governments take a lot of measures to keep things secret. When I was in the cabinet, I was Minister of Finance, most of my documents were marked secret. No one is allowed to see them unless they are authorized to read them. So secrecy plays a big role, of course, in security, in finance, I'm sorry, in, in defense. Countries have secrets, armies have secrets that they don't want anyone to know. Uh, recently, there were lots of news about Mr. Trump taking secret documents to his house in uh, Florida when he shouldn't have taken them because he's no longer president. So secrecy plays a big role in human affairs, but the point here is that with respect to God, there, there is no secrecy from God. The problem of fear is so overwhelming and I had difficulty in how to convey it. I, I thought I'd use an economic example because that's the area I'm most familiar with. The economic problem is the tension caused by man's unlimited wants versus limited resources. As a person, you need food, you need medicine, you need a home, you need clothing, you need transport and so on. But your ability to access these goods and services requires effort and resources, which often you do not have. And so the tension, the anxiety and worry, the fear, as you attempt to meet your needs, some of the needs like food, like medicine, like shelter, are absolutely critical. And when you are not able, as you struggle to meet these needs, there's tension, there's worry, and there's fear and anxiety. So fear is, is, is an important and serious aspect of, of our lives. And in the passage which was read in the Old Testament in Genesis, we read about Joseph, and uh, I don't concentrate so much on his uh, problems with Potiphar's wife, serious as that was. Um, I already mentioned that he had the grace of God to resist 
the temptation. At the grace of God, he, he knew that what he did in secret would not be secret from God. And he was able to resist. Uh, unlike Ananias and Sapphira in another text that was given to me in Acts chapter 5, where they attempted to hide the proceeds, the money they got from selling their land. And they thought they could hide it from God. And Peter said, no, you cannot hide it from God. And because you lied to God, the price you pay is death. And he died. But Joseph is in prison in Egypt. And Pharaoh gets a dream about seven fat cattle and seven lean cattle. And the lean cattle consume the seven fat ones. And similarly, the fat grain is uh, consumed by the lean grain, seven uh, grades or whatever. And he's worried about this dream. He's afraid and he calls his magicians and wise men to explain and they can't. And then he's told that there's a man called Joseph in prison who seems to have the gift of understanding dreams because he had interpreted dreams of the people who were in prison and uh, what he told them came true. So as a result, Joseph, because of the link he has with God, is brought to Pharaoh's attention. He says, I cannot interpret dreams, but God can. And he gives the interpretation and he is raised to a position of power. Egypt has a fear of famine, but when they receive this interpretation, they obey it and they solve their problem. Jacob's family, which is also Joseph's family, back in Canaan, also face famine. They are afraid of dying. And they have to travel to Egypt to look for food. In both cases, God's prophecy about famine and about Israel moving to Egypt is fulfilled. I will not dwell on that. The fear of God, but the fear of man, I thought, was best illustrated in Moses' life. Moses is born in a time of great fear. Male children are being killed by the Egyptians for fear. The Egyptians are afraid that the Hebrews are becoming too many, too powerful. So they are killing the children. So you have fear on the side of the Egyptians. You have fear on the side of the Hebrews whose children are being killed. Moses is being put on the bank of the river, hoping that he might not be killed. He might escape somehow. And God enables him to escape. When he grows up, He's 40 years old, he kills a man, an Egyptian, and when he's discovered he has to run for his life in Midian, he goes into hiding, into exile. I've been in exile two times, hiding from the government here. So I know how that feels. And I would write to my elder brother who was my guardian and say, I want to come home. He said, no, you can't come home. And I write again a year later, I want to come. He said, no, you cannot come home because of the fear of death. 
So, God appears to Moses after he has been in Midian for 40 years and says, I want you to go back to Egypt. I, I can't imagine being in his position. And he argues with God about why he shouldn't go back. He even says he can't talk properly. But God says you must go. And Moses obeys to go and face the fear of Pharaoh rather than face the fear of God. He obeys God and faces the fear of man. A choice that you and I have to make. Do we obey God or do we obey men? Is our life to be commanded by our fear of God or our fear of men? Moses goes and faces Pharaoh depending on his faith in God to do that. This is something for all of us to pray about. That God would give us the courage to stand for what is right even in the face of death. Most of us will not, of course. We fear too much. We fear man more than we fear God. And I think this probably explains the problem of the world. Because even in the face of slavery, even in the face of exploitation, even in the face of so much injustice, men fear death. Men fear men rather than fearing God. Something for you to reflect on, all of us. But while Moses is fighting for the freedom of the Jews, of the Israelites, the last weapon is the Passover. Passover. He tells the Israelites to kill a lamb and smear the blood on the doorposts and the upper part of the door and tells them when the angel of death comes he will pass over those who have done that and those who don't have the blood on the doorposts will be killed. Their first son will be killed. When COVID-19 came, my wife and I prayed for a Passover. My wife is not here today. She's in Nairobi looking after a patient. But we prayed for the Passover. For the first time, I think I understood the meaning of Passover. I had been reading it, it was in, like a theory. But when COVID came, we saw the need for a Passover. And we prayed and said, Lord, we put your blood on our hearts, the blood of Jesus and pray that you will pass over us, that this COVID disease will pass over our home and over our lives. The disease came and my wife got it. She had to go to hospital for two weeks and it was very severe. 
I also got it. And I remember being in the same place where we had prayed for a Passover and praying early in the morning before going to see her in the hospital. And God gave me a vision of her and I embracing in joy. And I said, she's not going to die. So, we are talking about God's demonstration of his power over death in this Passover experience. Our Lord came to the world, he became flesh and died, and then he rose again. He passed over death. Our fear of God will pass over, over us. Our fear of God will help us to pass over the fear of death. In John 5.24, we read, and I've talked about this verse before, when I had a brother who was dying, a younger brother who was dying, and the pain became too much for me to bear. And I stood in my room and prayed. I said, God, I can't bear this any longer. Please help me. And I went next door where there was a Bible. And I opened it. And I read, in red, the words of Jesus. John 5, 24. Truly I tell you, whoever hears and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He has crossed from death to life. It's as if the Passover for those who believe happens when you believe. When you believe the Passover happens, you cross from death to life. In the nine o'clock service, the Reverend explained it that because you are when you believe you are born again, you are spirit. The flesh may die, but the spirit will never die. And when you die, your spirit joins the spirit of God, of which it is now a part. So, the Passover is a refreshment, if you like, of God coming to re-emphasize, to save us from slavery. The Passover in the Old Testament, God rescues the Jews from the bondage, from the slavery of the Egyptians, where they have been for 430 years. In the New Testament, Jesus comes, and we read in Hebrews 2.14, that since the children, that you and me, have flesh and blood, he too, that's Christ, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. And free, set free, those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. The fear of death is something that bothers all of us. And I believe the reason why we are Christians, 
why we become Christians is because there is the solution to the fear of death. There is a solution to the slavery to the fear of death. And you need to find a way of taking this in for yourself as an individual. That there is a solution to the slavery, to the fear of death, by faith. And this faith, this faith, this faith is the substance, as the writer in Hebrew puts it. Faith is the substance. This is the substance of life, and I believe this is the substance of Christianity. This is the cause for commitment to Christ. In 1 John 4.18, it says that perfect love casts out fear. So, I said, but what is perfect love? We read that Jesus tells us that there is no greater love than that one gave his life for his friends. Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life for us. I think that is the definition of perfect love. So if John says that perfect love casts out fear, I take it as an invitation, as an explanation to me that I need to engage in a process that takes me towards perfect love in order to get out of fear. So what does that mean? Love of Christ. Jesus says, take, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest will be added to you. Your, your life, my life, needs to, out of all this myriad of things that cause you to fear, hunger, clothing, medicine, neighbors, brothers and sisters, employers, professors, all these things that we meet every day that cause us to fear. Jesus is saying, put the kingdom of God first. And the rest of these will be solved. The bondage of these things will be solved. So, he's talking about the first commandment, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Be committed to God as a priority first. And then these other things will fall in place. When you are young, as many of you are, and you are lost, you're trying to find a way. I 
I want to take it as a privilege to be able to receive the message of Jesus Christ because it gives you hope, it gives you an opening, it opens a way that can solve the millions of questions that you would never be able to answer on your own. I was telling the first service that a few years ago, when I was reflecting on my life and wondering how on earth did I come to do all the things and all the places and all the things that I have done in the world. And the Lord said to me, when you gave your life to me, in 1960, I have been guiding and designing your life ever since. There is no way I could have done what I have done. The last thing on my mind was ever to become Chancellor of Makerere. It never, it never even crossed my mind once. Then how did I get here? I can only say God brought me here because I didn't bring myself here. One time when I was doing my work uh, in NRM Secretariat, the Secretary for Economic Affairs, I think I'd been there for eight years, and Andrew Mwenda called me and said, you are going to be the next Minister of Finance. I told him, Andrew Mwenda, what do you have up with me? What problem do you have with me? Leave me alone. He said, you listen to five o'clock news. I listened to five o'clock news and they announced that I was the next Minister of Finance. I said, eh. I thought if I ever went the highest, maybe I would become a permanent secretary. But Minister of Finance? I'm just... I, in, I think once in my life I applied for a job. And that was coming to my career in 1973. That's when I applied. Other jobs, I just find myself here, find myself there, find myself there. God says, I have been designing your life. So, Perfect love casts out fear. That's what we are trying to explain. And Jesus says, I loved you so much that I gave my life for you. And that seems to be the standard of what it means, perfect love means. So I interpret it that Jesus is saying to me that if you exercise perfect love with regard to me, with regard to Christ, if I love him as he loved me, I can cast fear out of my life. That's how I interpret it. And indeed, when you read Matthew 16, 25. It says, For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake will find it. That is, life with me for all eternity. That's the amplified version. In the New Living Translation, simpler it says if you try to hang on to your life you lose it that's simple enough community 
if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. I think that's a clear call to you and to me to commit our life to God. A clear call for commitment. 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 Are you committed or are you moving in every direction? Wherever the wind blows, that's where you go. Are you committed? Commitment means dedication, destination, determination. It is the purpose for which you live. It refers to your life having a meaning or a purpose. And if you do not have a purpose, then it does not matter what you do. Because you have no purpose, it doesn't matter. If you do not know where you are going, it does not matter where you go. When you see a pub, you go. When you see a sport, you go. When you see what, you go. Because you are not going anywhere, so what does it matter? Where you go, what you do. You have no direction. Now, on this issue of commitment, Paul writes as follows in Romans 12, 1, 2. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. A sacrifice, as you know, in the Israelite history, you bring an animal, a goat, or a sheep, or a cow, a bull, and they would slaughter it on the altar as a substitute where they would have died they kill an animal and hope God would be pleased with the substitute. So when Paul says, offer your life as a living sacrifice, I imagine myself coming to the altar to, as an offer, an offering. I come to the altar, I see the fire burning, I see the knives. I get afraid. But luckily he adds the word living. It's a living sacrifice. So I think he means, he's not saying I come and I actually get beheaded. He says a living sacrifice. But an, a sacrifice must come to the altar. So, at the altar of God, I worship. At the altar of God, I read my Bible. At the altar of God, I meditate. At the altar of God, I go for fellowship. At the altar of God, I'm dedicating myself to service, to helping those who are in need. At the altar of God, I'm dedicating myself to doing things that please God. This is my commitment. This is my sacrifice. But living, while I'm living, while I'm breathing, I commit myself to do things that please God. I commit myself 
to pray. I commit myself to praise. I commit myself to be aware of the good things that God has done for me and to be grateful and to praise him and to testify what God has done. Paul in Acts 20, I usually quote this, says, I think 20:24, my life is worth nothing unless I use it to testify to the gospel of God's grace. And at first I said, can I say my life is worth nothing? Is it possible? But Paul says it. My life is worth nothing unless I use it to testify to, the, to God's grace. Unless I use it to finish the task which God has given me, the task of testifying to God's grace. When we started the book of Genesis, I think two years ago, one of the lessons I learned from Genesis was that God's purpose for you and for me cannot be changed by any man. God's purpose. Commit yourself to God's purpose for your life and you will not have any regret. You will be like Joseph. Joseph is shown at a young age he dreams of his brothers worshipping him or kneeling before him. And you can see how through selling him and saying now we shall see what becomes of his dreams. And later on they come and kneel before him. God's purpose is fulfilled. So Perfect love. You may not be as perfect as Christ in giving up your life to him as he gave for you. Although some of our people have been sacrificed. The Uganda matters. We are sacrificed. We are living in the same country that they were. They are our brothers. They are our relatives. And they were sacrificed. Maybe there's no better example of perfect love than that. When they actually gave their lives for Christ. But I believe Paul is not asking you to hang yourself or to be beheaded. He's simply saying, offer your life as a living sacrifice. Commit yourself to God. Commit yourself to prayer. Commit yourself to Bible study. Commit yourself to fellowship. Commit yourself to meditation. Commit yourself to God as your direction. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the rest of all these things that you fear will be resolved. So, as I conclude, I invite you to be at the altar, to make your life an altar, a living sacrifice. I believe that will resolve your problem of fear. You will have crossed from death to life.
And the fear of man cannot touch you. I was telling people in the first service that when Saul saw the army of the Philistines at Gilboa, he was at Gilboa and saw the army, the Bible says he was filled with terror. And he was the king. So the kings whom you fear are more terrified than you. You go around wondering, you know, fearing the president, fearing. They are more afraid than you are. So now, why terrified of those? When Senekarim came to attack Syria, uh, sorry, Jerusalem, and surrounded it, and he started saying how no king has ever survived the attack of Senekarim. And Hezekiah was uh, scared. He's put on sackcloth. And, but he sent, he sent envoys to Isaiah, the man of God. In that terror of the, of the army surrounding the country, Isaiah said, relax. Don't be afraid of Senekarim. God is going to send him back where he came from, and when he reaches there, he will be killed. And that's exactly what happened. The, 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 the people who cause you to fear, that's why I love the Psalms of David. Poor man, young fellow, like you, are running away from King Saul. King Saul is out to get him. He's sending armies this way and that way, every which way, to kill this young man. But you read his psalms. I like to read his psalms every day because they give me strength. He says, I'm surrounded by enemies, but I will not fear because... I know God is with me. I will not fear. So there is a lot in life that causes us to fear. But I believe I have come to see that much as our faith will be shaken, and our faith will be tested. I have come to believe that nothing can pluck me out of God's hand. <laughs> nothing and no one can pluck me out of God's hand. So I, brothers and sisters, come to the altar of God. Come with prayers. Come and read the word. Come to fellowship. Commit to the Lord God. This will cast away your fear. Perfect love. Committing yourself, being in the footsteps of Christ can solve this problem of fear. And even if you you decide that you want to go for all the other things in, in the world, you will still die, but you will die without hope, and you will go to hell. But we have this faith. We have this faith. And this faith. And I repeat that this faith, in my view, is the substance of life, of Christian life. And if we commit to this love, of God, he will save us and save our lives and give us eternal life, which is what he came to do. So I will request the pioneers.
you could uh, do that song again in Christ alone and invite anyone who has not yet given their life to Christ. This is the time to commit to pass from death to life. This is the time to believe. This is the time to receive Christ in your life and to move away from fear of man to the fear of God, which is a shelter, which is the security, which is a safety that you need. As they sing in Christ alone, feel free to come and commit or recommit your life to Christ. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cold and stone, this solid ground. somebody you want to commit your life to Jesus you want to recommit your life to Jesus you want to come to the altar of the Lord as a living sacrifice this is why we are singing we are waiting for you it's not just engaging you in singing the singing is to welcome anyone who would like to commit or recommit your life to Jesus, come to the altar. The last part, please. Please come. Don't, don't hesitate. Don't waste time. This kind of gospel cannot be preached and you remain at large there. It's a special opportunity for you. Please come. Please come. Even in the, uh, up there, wherever you are, you just come. This is the power of Christ. Amen. 
Amen. Come, come, come. Don't hesitate. No power of hell. Don't hesitate. Just come. The Lord is here. Can never come to the altar. Is there any other? The chance is still there. Come, see Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for each one of these, your children, for the response to your word, the gospel, and for the demonstration of the Spirit's power. 
that Lord you have anointed your servant the Chancellor of this great university to proclaim your word faithfully and in power and so for these who have laid their lives at the altar we pray that indeed there will be a living sacrifice holy and pleasing and acceptable use each one of them Lord for the extension of your kingdom just say Lord Jesus I offer up my life my spirit my soul my body to you as a living sacrifice accept me use me as a vessel of honor Lord write my name in the book of life that one day I will reign with you eternally and so fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit transform me and make me the kind of person you want me to be I renounce I disassociate myself from fear the fear of man that Lord I will embrace the fear of God the one who is able to destroy the one who kills the flesh and their soul in hell and so Lord I am yours from now onwards I'm born again and I will love you in Jesus name we pray amen and amen <laughs> hallelujah let's clap to the Lord for his presence with us and let us also appreciate Professor uh, Ezra Sruma for preaching God's word and for that response. To God be the glory. Please do fill this card and uh, I hope you have a pen. We should be having pens as well as we give cards because they, 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 they sometimes don't bring pens. And after the service, we will meet in the tent out there to encourage you more with prayer. And for now, you may be seated. To God be the glory. Thank you, young man, for leading those who came. You're the one who led all those who came. God bless you. Amen. Let us now joyfully bring our gifts to God as we prepare the holy table. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We are going to minister to you in a special song. We don't usually do specials in this church, but today uh, Professor Ezra requested us to, to do this song, <laughs> to sing this song. It's a simple song. You can join as we minister before the Lord. Time of trial. 
shall hide me in the time of trouble. He shall hide me. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I
with your love and unite us in the body of your son Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For Christ who loves us and who gave himself for us, we give you thanks O oh God. Amen. His death we proclaim. His coming we await. Together, O oh Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Beloved, draw near with faith and partake of this holy sacrament, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen.
So thanking God for the love he demonstrated on the cross by laying down his life for his friends. Greater love has no one than this, that someone, that is Christ, should lay down his life for his friends. His body was broken that we might be healed and his blood was shed for the cleansing of our sin. And so the Holy Sacrament reminds us and renews our covenant of love with God. And we are also assured that we are eternally saved. So thank you, Lord, for feeding us, first of all, with your word, and now with your body and your blood. We pray that you would seal your blessing in each one of our lives. And Lord, as we prepare to go out, will you dismiss us with your heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I'm told there are announcements, but I hope I won't be uh, challenged. I am sure we are a community that is um, literate enough to know what is happening. Is there anyone who doesn't know about the men's encounter? Retreat? Anybody? Okay, so uh, it starts on Friday. In case you haven't registered, please do register. And the, what, what was the other one? Married account. Is there anybody who we are? Please don't don't take us back to the ancient days. We are online people, aren't we? Yeah. So really, we shouldn't take another five minutes making announcements. And people have already 
we have already overstretched by 35 minutes, by the way. And so request that I request that you allow me to pronounce the benediction. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lift your hands to the Lord. May the peace of God, which transcends human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and of his dear son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. May that blessing come strongly on this university as the, the VC has announced as we get to the climax of the celebration of a hundred years. May that blessing manifest in a new way and usher us into the next a hundred years in a greater glory. And may that blessing go ahead of you and scatter the darkness from before your path and remain with you all now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I, from the many things that we heard, very powerful statements from the preacher, this one captured my mind. That uh, Professor Ezra has, in all his life, and he's not young, he has applied for only one job. you right? And then he said, I, ju I just find myself here and there. Uh, now, may you find yourself here and there. <laughs> may you find yourself somewhere in URA. May you somehow find yourself as an MD somewhere. May you find yourself somewhere in KCCA. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, we thank you, Prof, and uh, the ministry team. Thank you again, VC and, uh, and Susan. And, of course, uh, Mrs. Me, uh, Florence Asimwe, uh, and all of you for having come to worship the Lord. And I'm sure we are going back different. Amen? No fear of man. You would rather fear God. Amen? Amen? So let us now go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. We go in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our session of him, please. See you.